Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Copy and Deck. Team Blue today, we have the Intel i7 13700KF available here today. Raptor Lake, you may like it, you may not like it. This is the Intel i7 13700KF. It has 16 cores and 24 threads. It also has a L3 cache of 30 megabytes and L2 cache of 24 megabytes. Its base frequency is 3.4 gigahertz on the P cores and 2.5 gigahertz on the E cores. It has a max turbo frequency of up to 5.4 gigahertz on the P cores and up to 4.2 gigahertz on the E cores. This is an unlocked processor. It has no integrated graphics and its max memory speed allowed is 5600 MHz on DDR5. Whereas on DDR4, it is 3200 megabytes. Before we move into the benchmarks, let me just introduce you to the system that we've used to test the whole processor. The processor, as you know, is the Intel i7-13700KF. We've paired it with a Asus ROG Strix Z790E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. 16 gigabyte times two, 5600 MHz of Z-Scale Trident Z5. Okay, we are using a 512 gigabyte Adlink F70 NVMe. Okay, the graphic card of choice is the Asus Stuff RTX 3070. The PSU we are using the Asus ROG Thor 850 watts. The processor would be cooled with the NZXC Kraken Z73. That is a 360 millimeter AIO liquid cooler. Everything will be housed in an NZXT H7 casing. Now that we know what is the system we've used, okay, let's move off to our benchmark scores. The first benchmark we ran, a synthetic benchmark, okay, was TimeSpy Extreme. TimeSpy Extreme, we managed to reach a peak temperature of 86 degrees Celsius. We received a CPU score of 10,101 points. We received a GPU score of 6,807 points and a combined score of 7,157. The second synthetic benchmark we ran was TimeSpy. We received a temperature peak of 88 degrees Celsius for this. We had a CPU score of 13,800, a GPU score of 19,865, and a combined score of 14,462. We also ran 3D Mark CPU profile, okay, where we only look into account of the performance of the max number of threads. Okay. For the CPU profile test, we managed a temperature peak of 88 degrees Celsius, whereas the points we scored for max number of threads was 12,922. The final synthetic benchmark we ran was Cinebench R23. We ran both the multi-core test and also the single-core test for 10 minutes to test for thermal throttling. On the multi-core test, we managed a score of 30,020 points while the temperature peaked at 98 degrees Celsius. Whereas on the single-core test, we managed to get 2,099 points while the temperature peaked at only 69 degrees Celsius. Yes, the multi-core test, we actually hit 98 degrees Celsius. When it hit 98 degrees Celsius, I actually noticed that the clock speeds started to drop by 100 to 200 megahertz. Instead of getting 5.4 gigahertz, we were getting only 5.2 to 5.3 on the Pico at maximum boost. We also ran a couple of gaming benchmarks, titles such as Battlefield 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, Apex Legends, GTA 5, and Fortnite were ran to determine how many frames per second we could actually get. We are only going to show you the average frames per second of all of these games under the resolution of 1440p. For Battlefield 5, you can see that we actually achieved almost 130 frames per second. We're talking about average frames per second here again, take note. Apex Legends, we hit 140 frames per second. GTA 5, 90 frames per, se per second. And for Fortnite, we managed to get 110 frames per second. Lastly, for Red Dead Redemption 2, we managed 55 frames per second on ultra setting. What I would like to actually stress 
but this is my personal view. I'm going to stress about my personal view of the overall performance and everything there is to talk about this processor. This processor, as I said in the start, you'll either like it or you'll hate it. Okay. Why you would like it, why you would hate it is totally subjective. I'm going to talk more about our Cineband scores. First mentioned earlier, running with the AIO, uh, our Cinebench multi-core test score was 30,020 points. Temperature peak at 98 degrees Celsius. Just so you all know, I also ran the test using an air cooler. The air cooler of choice was the Thermal Ride FC140. Running with the air cooler, my mind almost exploded. Okay, I was reaching temperatures of up to 101 degrees Celsius and performance was being restricted due to thermal throttling. I was losing about 200, 300 megahertz from my clock speeds. Temperature was at boiling point. I felt disappointed at that point in time. I really felt disappointed. What I did was I actually looked into the BIOS settings, tweaked around here and there, here and there, and I actually realized that the processor was receiving 1.4 voltages of power from the motherboard. Looking into that, I thought maybe, okay, maybe we could actually just, let me undervolt the whole thing and see what I could actually get out of it. Step by step, I undervolted until I reached a stable point of 1.28 volts, okay? 1.28 volts, I also locked the processor at 5.4 gigahertz, why I chose 5.4 GHz is only one reason. Intel advertises this as being able to boost up to 5.4 GHz, so I expect it to actually reach 5.4 GHz. So I locked all cores to sync at 5.4 GHz, and then proceeding to undervolt at 1.28 volts, I ran Cinebench R23 multi-core using the AIO NZXT Z73, and I received a temperature peak of 88 degrees Celsius. Now, this is where I actually started to like the processor. Why I started to like the processor? After doing all these tweaks, okay, I got a score of 30,903 points. 30,903, that is an increment of almost 880 points from the original testing with no tweaks done. Well, what can I say? Minor tweaks, greater improvements, lesser power draw, lower temperatures, amazing performance. That is why I actually love the processor. By tweaking, by adjusting, I managed to get this processor, processor to actually work at a really optimum level. That's about it I'm gonna say about the processor. Oh yeah, I forgot to actually tell you one thing. This processor, the 13700KF, is going to be retailed at about 389 USD. However, this price is subjected to your local MSRP. Different regions, different pricing, I know. So let's see how it goes. Hopefully, in the coming weeks, I will be releasing more videos about the performance of this i7. And I hope you all enjoy the upcoming videos. So till then, stay around. Hit the like and subscribe and see you all in the next one.